What's up guys? Uncle John here. Uh, you know, I had people ask me questions about kegs, working out with kegs, and I've been talking about getting me some, and I finally did. I got some small ones. I got some big ones. These are um, really great for working out arms, backs, legs, whatever. Um, you can do carriers with them, you can throw them, all kinds of stuff. Curls, squats, power cleans, uh, presses, overhead presses. So, anyway, I tried to, sorry about that, I tried to find a sheltered spot out of the wind and it didn't work, but that's okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to set this up so that you can add weight to it, uh, you know, adjust your weight easy because you have these tops, these valves, and it really doesn't work well unless you can add some weight to it over time progressive resistance so all right, let me adjust the camera here and see if we can figure this out together I haven't done one yet but I've seen it done all right first thing you want to do is this ball valve here you want to face this away from you and you want to push push that ball in a little and release any pressure that's in there I've already done that there's no pressure left it smells like stinky stale old beer and you're going to want to rinse these out probably because that'll keep creating pressure. Now, let me see if I can show you this. So, here's the here's the ball. You're going to want to push that down, release some pressure. See that? Pretty easy. Then once you're done, you've got this clip here, this metal ring. See how it's split here? And you've got a little notch here and a little notch here. That split, this ring, retains this valve. So what you want to do is you want to try to get that out. I've got a screwdriver that's got a messed up tip anyway. I'm going to take a hammer and drive it down in here and pry that ring out. I'm not worried about bending this edge a little bit because we're going to find a new way to seal it up when we're done. So, hopefully you can see where I popped the end of that ring out. And once it's the end started, you just peel it right on around and it'll... And there's a few layers of it, so... And that's it. You want that retaining clip out of there. Alright? You can toss that, do whatever, make an earring out of it. We're not going to need that. Then, from what I understand... This either turns a little, it either unscrews, or it only turns enough to come past these two little notches to come out. It's a, it's a valve system that goes down inside, so let's find out. Okay, so for this style keg in the U.S., there are two little ears. And basically, when you put the valve in, you put them in those notches, turn it so that they're under this lip, and then that, put that retaining ring in, that's what holds it. So, in our case, ta-da, there's the valve. Now you got an open keg full of nasty beer. So I'm going to rinse this out some. Compost pile's right behind you guys, so old stale beer is great for compost. So we'll put the old water in there and uh, see if we can figure out how much weight we want in here. So I've got, and let me show you. 
So I rinsed it out. So I rinsed it out. Very basic. Not doing anything fancy with it. If there's a tiny little beer, bit of beer residue in there, I really don't care because I'm going to seal it up. This thing's about halfway full. I don't know. It feels like 40 pounds, but I'll weigh it later. But here's the cool trick that's going to seal this back up easy and make it so we can open it and close it. So, got these rubber end caps. Uh, back in the day, we called these Fernco caps. In fact, this is a Fernco brand, but there are other companies that make these. It's just a rubber plumbing cap. Uh, you plug off uh, drain lines and things like that. Nothing with any real pressure because it is rubber. Um, and it has some flex. So if, if this thing builds up a little bit of pressure from the, the beer residue that's in there, it'll give. It's not going to like explode or anything. Um, got this cool hose clamp to hold it on. Um, for most US kegs, this is a 2-inch Fernco cap, which means it fits a 2-inch PVC pipe. The two inch PVC pipe is two inches on the inside of the pipe. So it's actually like two and three eighths on the outside, which is what this is, but it's for a two inch pipe. So if you go to a hardware store or on Amazon, tell them you want a two inch Fernco cap. It's a rubber end cap. Don't get the fitting that joins two pipes together because that'll be useless. And as you can see, in fact, I started tightening this by hand and I shouldn't have because I wanted to stretch a little bit to go over that lip. So what I'm going to do is see if it'll go over this top and it will. Take the clamp off and then flex this to get it on to that fitting. Get it seated all the way down. Ta-da! And then put this clamp back on. And you can unscrew it a little bit. Get yourself a multi-screwdriver. Love them. When you pull the bit out, it has a nut driver built right in. So we'll loosen that a little more. Get that down. Go through the handle so I can reach, maybe. And again, this is just to keep the water in, keep it from splashing on you when you're working out. Nothing fancy. It just needs to do its job. <laughs> Snugging it down. Mine's a little crooked because I'm having a hard time getting to the clamp through this handle. The bigger keg is a little easier because you can get inside here with the screwdriver. But as long as it's got even pressure all the way around, it should work. Let's find out if it leaks. Uh, it does not. So there you go. That's how you set up your keg. Now, finding them is another story completely. It depends on where you live, what the laws are, everything else. Basically, some people will go get a keg from a local beer store, pay the deposit, pay for the keg, have a party, empty the keg with the party, and never return the keg. It's not legal. I'm going to tell you that straight up. It is not legal. It belongs to whoever bought those kegs originally, and most of the time those people will have them marked. I'm fortunate, and these kegs were damaged and can't be filled anymore. They won't even fit on the washers they have for them. So, they're useless. Um, they were going to scrap them anyway. I, I was fortunate in that they let me have these kegs. I didn't have to pay for them, but sometimes you can pick them up for scrap value. You know, 10, 12, 30 bucks. Sometimes you get a decent keg that like these necks are t slightly tweaked so they can't do anything with these but if you get one that's still serviceable they may sell it to you an empty one for like 35 bucks and it's totally worth it that's what you're gonna pay for a deposit anyway if you get one from a beer store um, you know scrap yards you might get lucky and find one but they're not in in some states they're supposed to take them and then turn them in to the state um, but yeah, I mean, I know in some places they can come after you for it because they take a copy of your license number and everything when you put your deposit down. And it's not legal. It's theft, even if you pay the deposit. So, you know, I don't want to get into all the legalities of it. Um, there are places to find kegs. You just got to keep looking and keep scrounging. Sometimes you can find them on Craigslist, eBay. Um, I wouldn't, for a full size, uh, it's a half barrel. 
full modern full keg is not a full barrel. Um, it's about I want to say about 15 and a half gallons for a full size keg. So for one of those, I wouldn't pay more than 35 to 40 dollars for it. Um, but it's a very adjustable piece of workout equipment. So, all right, guys, hope that helped you out some. Next time, I'm going to show you what we do with these. So, come back, check us out, keep moving, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it.